Greetings and salutations, my friend. This is not specifically a stream, but rather something that came to my attention. Dear friend, Killer, uh, Killer Dan, Rogue Agent Killer Dan, one of my um, Altered Beasts of Loyalty has been having some problems with a bug, an insect. So I decided that after this little insect began biting on my personal skin like the mosquito it is to give you a little something. This is what the invisible looks like when he's being, by the way, sarcastic. This is not a stream, this is just a recording. So, first and foremost, yes, I use uh, DuckDuckGo instead of uh, Google because I believe DuckDuckGo is much more uh, secured. But I'm not here for DuckDuckGo specifically. I'd like you to see something. Have you ever heard about that insect called the Dung Beetle? This kind of an insect, dung beetle, is a beetle that lives in the deserted areas. As you can see, it's black so that it can stand uh, the sun heat. Its favorite uh, thing to do is literally to just carry the animal's shit. You have it. Can bury dung 250 times their mass in one night. Many dung beetles, known as rollers, roll dung into balls, as in shit, which are used as food source or breeding uh, chambers. Others, known as turners, bury the dung that is shit wherever they find it. A third group is the dwellers. Neither nor uh, neither roll nor borrow, they simply live in dung. Why am I b giving you currently a lesson in biology and in insectology? Um, basically, I would like you to imagine that I would like you to imagine the internet itself, yes, the internet, as a very big ball of combined dung of everyone that uses it. Good? Okay. And uh, I'd like you to imagine this beetle being your impersonator, your body. Your body is carrying shit from all around the internet, especially from where he finds it, and then rolls it into YouTube. This ball of dung is what I would call YouTube, because it is rolling what it's using for feasting, as in feeding, for breeding, and for even its own sheltering. So, when you are imprisoned between a beetle and its shit, there is no reason for, for you to get so much annoyed. Sometimes there is also a quotation that I love so much. Sometimes, let me check here if I can find it. Sometimes, I apologize beforehand about my loud, noisy keyboard uh, clicking. It's an insult for you to prove your own value. Where is that again? Don't waste your time to prove your value. There was a very specific 
uh, image that I found. Uh, basically, basically, a tiger, maybe a jaguar, I'm not really sure what it is again. Proving yourself can sometimes be an insult. The tale of the cheetah and the rest dogs. Whatever here. This is a cheetah. Proving yourself won't bring you much gratification. Realize that. Basically, a cheetah and a pack of dogs performed in the same circus. The cheetah, graceful, confident, and assured, performed her acts and owed the audiences. And the dogs, fun, playful, adorable mutts, and ever ready to please, wowed the crowds again and again. All we all was well until the ringmaster had the brilliant idea of the cheetah and the dog stories. Then he got a lesson for his life. Once, uh, okay, for his life. The audience, okay, the circus manager, ringmaster, together, made a formidable creative team. They pushed boundaries and created the fresh, never seen before acts everywhere. What I wish to reach in this uh, story is that, um, here. One day, while brainstorming, the ringmaster had a brilliant idea. Why not race that dog and the chira? He asked the audience would love it. He continued, the circus manager agreed, and everyone went to work. So the dog handler worked hard to prepare the dogs for the race. Every day, he would pet each dog behind the ears and whisper, providing yourself in this race is important, compete to win. And so, day after day, he trained the dogs, and with each passing day, the dogs got better. The cheetah's handler didn't need to do much. All that was required was to teach the animal to recognize the cue to start running. It was an easy lesson for the animal as soon as it heard the cue of its pet doing what it was born to do. What it was born to do. One day, on the day of the race, many people gathered to watch the anticipation. The circus manager had done a great job advertising the race. The animals were each put in a cage. On the queue, the cages were open. The dogs sprang out of their respective cages, with guts to gusto running as if their lives depended on it. But the cheetah did something quite interesting. It did not move an inch whilst the dogs ran feverishly. It laid in its cage, unbothered, lifted one paw, one front paw, and began to lick it. It watched as the dogs made to the finish line, whatever. Then the cheetah, I don't live in this garbage here. Then the cheetah laid down its head and closed its eyes. Basically, it slept. What just happened? The circus manager asked the cheetah handler. I suppose the cheetah knows something we didn't quite consider. And that what would that be? The manager asked, asked. That proving yourself in certain situations isn't just a waste of time, but also an insult. The handler replied. So the manager stood still for a brief moment and then said, that's quite a timeless lesson, isn't it? Why am I bringing this story for you? Well, simple really, my friend. Yes, I'm recording my voice here. Shiraz are referred to here in our own example. For us, the profitless um, content creators. How much we put in our creations and uh, how little we get, especially from the handler. If they truly wish to reward it, they should have just released it to the wild or uh, made it retire in happiness outside of the circus. But no, they keep it with them just for the entertainment. The dogs that are trying their best to be the toy of the viewers they that 
The dogs are the one creature that is the most misunderstood, overestimated, and quite literally worshipped. They had to fight each other. They had to fight the king of racing to prove themselves to be faster. Sometimes proving, proving yourself can be an insult. Not just the time, uh, what I'm wasting, but rather an insult. What am I talking about exactly? You and I both, my friend, Rogue Agent Killer Dan, <coughs> have been around this world from before the two, uh, two to uh, the twenties. Right now, it is uh, twenty twenty-two. I joined the web in 2007. And you joined the web also quite a long uh, time ago. The thing is, when we both have worked our sweat, tears, and literally our health to the brim, and we keep uh, non-stop doing what we know how to do, like the cheetah. We can surprise the world with our creations and content. But when a dog arrives to bark in our faces and simply believing that what it did was great, awesome, hip, etc. Bruh. Are you trying to... Are you trying seriously right now to compare the embers of a lighter I'm talking about a portable lighter cigar hand size lighter This is not what I'm looking at uh, either. Regardless, you get my point. You're trying to compare a small um, oil lighter with the fire of a volcano. Really? Also, there is a second story that I remembered. It's about a cow and a fly. Yes, a cow and a fly. This one I read when I was really young. So, a fly. A fly once, just like this thing, the most, one of the most annoying, uh, disgusting pests in the world that I really hate, flew around a barn. And once its uh, wings get tired, it decided to bother, in quotation marks, a cow in a barn. Barn. I said barn. Oh, okay, fine, whatever, I guess. Event. <laughs> barn. Yeah. Something like this. Or like this. So, the fly sat on the back of the cow and waited a few hours, not just moments. Once the fly got its wrist, it flew into the face of the cow. And told the cow, I'm sorry that I bothered you with my weight on your back. The cow was confused. Because the cow told the fly, I never even felt your existence. Even if you and a thousand of your kin 
took a break on my back, I wouldn't have filled them. Basically, the cow told the fly about how ignorant and silly its logic was for a fly to wait something that would bother a cow. What am I getting at? Well, this is what I'm getting at. Your so-called imposter, my friend, is not just a fly. Nope. It's a fruit fly. You see this uh, little uh, pest here? This pest visits fruit when they are rotting. It's so small, so very small, that you cannot almost see it in your naked eye. This little fly that we have been reporting for so long right now, and of course our dear friend YouTube is ignoring all of our reports, is it trying to annoy two dragons. This is what we are. Not a cow. Nope. This is what we are. We keep shouting content. We keep making grand content. Legends. We have multiple accounts, multiple friends. And we have a greatness like nothing else. Whoever shouts at our faces, we will burn them to hell with them. And I'm not talking, talking just per content as in verbally. No. We are more than prepared to turn this world to hell if needed. And now you're telling me that <laughs> a fruit fly is coming to annoy us. A fruit fly, this thing. Fruit fly size. <laughs> wow. This little thing, this little insignificant pest. You want this thing to annoy us? Like, yeah, I get it. That pest is insulting us. But frankly speaking, for a throwaway trash, don't even call it an account. What this pest has is a trash, a throwaway dung. Yeah. This dung beetle, this fruit fly, that goes to feed on the rotting stuff before it even becomes alcohol. This dung eater, dung breeder, dung roller, dung dweller. This beetle that came to us rolling its own dung into a world that's filled with dung that's called the human race, that's called Google, and that's called YouTube. And just because it thought that it could impersonate copycat and annoy someone else, that's a dragon with its own land, its own treasures, and its own owned content. With its dung. It wishes to fight you with dung. This pest. And it thinks that whatever it is doing, it is doing something very big, and it is actually affecting you. 
Here's the thing about you. Why not let this dung dweller just keep scratching its tiny beetle, beetle limbs into bedrock? This is what we are made of. We have extreme strong foundations. We have the experience throughout the years. We have our worth. We know how strong and potential we have. We know how dedicated we are. So if you let a dung beetle, a small fruit fly, weightless, come here and scratch it and then actually leave a visible trace, then uh, my friend Calrodan, this is very much a sorry scene. Yes, I saw the video you uh, shared with me, but the thing is, no need. This, this dung dweller is insignificant. It doesn't matter about the number of videos. It doesn't matter. It does not matter about the number of subscribers, viewers, or videos. What matters is that what matters is that both of us know about our actual value. Besides, your true fans would seek you, not seek a sorry pest that looks like you, an envious loser like that pest. And the pretty please don't call it a copycat. No, 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 no. Because when you call someone a copycat, you are literally insulting every single actual copycat. To be a copycat, you need to be very talented. Be very perceptive. You will need to impersonate truly the other person. Look like them. Talk like them. Act like them. Own some similar stuff to them. You are overestimating your pest. Okay? What you have there is not a copycat. It's not an impersonator. Frankly enough, if someone could make as many reviews as you did or support the causes that you supported, that's take, that alone takes a lifetime of dedication. Also, if someone could get with me the same levels of respect, the same levels of trust and loyalty that we both exchange as brothers from other mothers, it simply takes an eternity to reach that level of friendship we both have. We are both simply brothers. Even if it's uh, on the net only. So to, to call someone an impersonator, it means that this person was more than a was more than competent enough to do everything you did and do it better than you and be able to take your name for themselves. Listen, buddy. Both of us uh, use icons. Icons can... Uh, anyone can use them. My icon, I made it personally. The big uh, golden-handled uh, sword that looks like an eye. This is completely original and I made it by myself using... Uh, LibreOffice Impress. That's the free uh, open source uh, replacement for Office, uh, Microsoft Office Word, by the way. So, if someone takes an icon from the internet, icons are not owned by anyone. Anyone can get them and use them as they wish, as long as they don't get copyrighted for them. Having multiple people use the same icon is nothing new. Having someone else use your name with a slang or slur next to it is just a pest begging for attention. When you wish to, rather when you see a dung beetle, a dung pest, a dung dweller, a dung eater, feeder, breeder, 
when you see a dung lover carrying its bowl of dung and then pushing it at, towards you first and foremost you're a dragon you're not a beetle would you even be able to see it because your head your face is dwelling up the mountains in the sky you are smelling the smell of nature the grass the mountains the sky possibly preparing for a rain or waiting for a chance to go into a big adventure with your giant wings and then a small almost un unnoticeable dung beetle approaches you and places a bowl of its own dung next to your finger in this case it's a claw you think if you did step into that dung it would affect you <laughs> not really you wouldn't even notice it because that's how mighty and big you are if you truly did notice it you most likely would just um, push it into nearby trees clean it off and thinks that some sorry excuse for living is just playing with your prank since it's literally a beetle and most likely since you don't have time to waste on them you would give them a breath of fire and burn the entire hive the entire place on their heads so why bother wasting your time sometimes trying to prove your own worth to the others is not just rude but also an insult to yourself you are born with the greatness don't let some dung feeder stick its dung on your own pride you are a proud content creator you are an active content creator you know what the quality is what the quality looks like you stand with those who don't have anyone to stand with your work and dedication is surprisingly admirable and very much respected everyone in the world have their own preferences tastes etc since if everyone had the same things exactly life would be boring really so if someone doesn't like someone else's preference um who cares if someone must force their own preferences and ideals on everyone else <laughs> that is what you call a narcissist self-worshipping pest when you forcefully make your own preferences and your own opinions and ideals upon the others that's what you call a nuisance harassment a bully and overall an attention bigger you already blocked and reported this dung lover okay block it and never look at it again it's just that simple really it is trying to seek negative reputation to make others get angry at it and get more views don't give this dung dweller what it is demanding it's just really that simple this dung lover is not worth your time your mentality or your emotional rage i saw the video and i got offended myself but frankly when i looked at the number of hours i have when i saw the number of uh, stuff i have to do plans to uh, plans to make projects to finish i realized something why am i being bothered with an insect that is near my claw that is eating its own shit when i am literally standing in my lair in the front of my mountain of treasures and planning how my dungeon will go for the heroes 
will have a very hellish time when they step into my domain. We content creators are not pests. We create our own domains, our layers, our own content and our treasures. And it is the viewers, the adventurers, adventurers, duty to arrive to us, check what we have and then inform others about us and what to expect when they visit us. So when you look at the situation for real, you have a giant layer for yourself to build and you're caring too much about a dung feeder that is annoying you very limitly very restrictly by its own dung filled mouth dung touching little small insignificant limbs and you are mad at the smell of its dung like, for God's sake, this insignificant waste of life is not worth any of this. I know, I do realize that bullying and harassment are both annoying and uh, illegal. But frankly enough, when the world outside is built the most used block to build it is literally dung. And all the adventurers have to walk through dung to reach our layers that are made from bedrock. Don't you think that our layers do stand out quite a lot and in a remarkable way? Because it is, they are the one thing that is not dung. That's not shit. So why bother with the world that is made of shit? and build with it when you are more busy than ever to accessorize your bedrock with gold silver and platinum with some other kinds of valuable materials you get my, you get my point right now my friend don't bother with the dung dwellers. You are higher. And they never had a life from the start. You are literally speaking or getting rather mad about something that would be more than happy to wait for your own dung into its face to feed on it. Yes, that's what a dung dweller does. It is waiting for you to dunk on top of it to please it. With that level of a pleasure only coming from your own dung on top of it. I mean, this sorry existence, really. This is just a way to give it its, its own... Uh, which would be to take away its miserable existence and miserable life truly but well whatever i think uh, youtube is filled with too many dung beetles to count i mean the amount of numbers of uh, dung beetles that i've blocked throughout the years and the ones that you blocked at the of the years, had they had their dung dwellings deleted from the website, I think the biggest dung leave, uh, staying behind would be Google alone, alongside with Alphabet. It's another uh, uh, company. Frankly, if all the bullying dung beetles were eradicated, I think that the website could truly rise to its own potential. Possibly. Sorry about today, there is, no, there is not going to be a stream because uh, I had a long uh, college uh, day and it is already 1 uh, 5 in the morning. I don't have time to record anything for today. So I just wished to offline give you this message, my friend. 
rogue agent Karudan, one of my altered beasts of loyalty. Individuals who I am more than ready to take a bullet and twist my life to save them. You dare to place your dung sphere nearby their claws. Please go and eat others' shit because we the dragons are higher than this level. I and Kerodan both know about this bully, this pest, and how insignificant its life is. Someone to target one person exactly. With all of this harassment, <laughs> I mean, it is not even... Uh, it is not even something that you need to think about too much. This person... This beetle, this fruit fly, this dung lover is simply a creature that is trying to find its own reason to exist. Most likely, it has no life to go and live it. I mean, even stalkers can do better uh, jobs than this, but this creature this pest, this waste of life, this dung-filled pest is just funny. Too funny. Frankly, it should go to the beetle's circus and there be sure not to be stepped over. Rogajan Kaurudan, my advice for you is to ignore this pest. Do not watch anything it posts, posts, do not share anything it posts, and whoever is the sorry soul that subscribed for it, I hope they remove the subscription or enjoy a life that's filled both visually and sensually with shit from it. This is just a sorry existence for a pest that is better off than existence as well. This is, by the way, just some sarcasm uh, message, not even a rant. Believe me. Once my little uh, voice limiter goes from the yellow line at uh, minus 15 decibels up to zero, the red line, that is when I start screaming my lungs out. And that, I hope for it to never happen. Because if it does reach that level, it would mean that um, I'm about to take someone six feet under. And for a person that is not afraid of death like me, in fact, someone who doesn't really mind it, believe me, that is one move I know for a fact I will not regret doing. Till the next session, whenever that it will be, hope you have a good day, all of you. My altered beasts of loyalty, and especially you, Rogue Agent Karudan, for your patience with the pest problem you have. And uh, let's see you next time. Peace be upon you all. Take care and good night. Invisible with you. Sign out.